Security. That's today's topic, and there's a few things that I've done. I put the uh, NVR in service, that Hikvision. After last video, I found out that you can actually reset the password using an online utility. It's actually pretty insecure. It's like a hash algorithm, like a salt and a hash, and the salt is the date that the NVR thinks it is. So anyway, we got that working, but then I found out that you can't actually use it in um, modern browsers. You have to have a plugin. The plugin requires a Hikvision software download. The reason Hikvision is not available in the US is because of sanctions. So this NVR is working and is recording, so I could grab footage off of it, but it's not going to be a long-term solution. So I will be making an NVR with a Pi with a new rack mount unit that I talked about and hinted at previously, so subscribe for that video coming up. Uh, I also am removing this ADT security system. It has a keypad, some cameras, uh, the control boxes back there, and I put in a Simply Safe system. Now this is not sponsored at all. Uh, I really just wanted a quick, quick and dirty security system to throw in here. I know there's vulnerabilities because it uses the 400, I think 432 megahertz frequency. And there's problems with that. You can see that I'll link to a, a lock picking lawyer video on it. Uh, but I wanted something quick and dirty that would all, at least alert me to when somebody opens a door and I'm not here, things like that. It has motion sensors. It actually was really easy to install. I, I, uh, if you need a quick security system that might not be the most secure thing in the world, but is good for peace of mind, that's it, it was super easy to set up. I got that set up. I also popped out all of these ceiling tiles up here and um, we were getting a better look at everything. One of the big things that I wanted to do, security is not just a, a matter of doors and alarms and things like that. It's also, this is a stretch. It's also security and knowing that you made the right decisions building a place. Uh, and to that end, I'm working with an architect, somebody who's had some experience building radio studios. And we're gonna be building a studio. It's gonna be a room inside a room. And originally I had other plans, but I'm not a builder, I'm not an architect. I don't know all the details about these things. I know that if you put padding on a wall, it kind of, there's less sound reflection. But architects are professionals. They know how to make things work the way that you want them to work. There's things like STC, which is sound transmission, coefficient or something like that. There's STC, there's other noise ratings, and you can build a room to a specification. You can say, here's the frequencies we want to reduce, and here's the level of reduction that we want. And I basically said, I want to be able to do almost anything in here at any time, except when there's a train going by. There's a train that rolls right outside here a few times a day. If a train rolls by, I'm going to stop recording. It's too loud. There's, I could spend a hundred thousand bucks and build a studio, but I'm not going to do that. I don't have that budget. Uh, but the architect has been great working on making sure that we have the right things for a roof uh, to make sure that the HVAC, which is right in the roof up here, the HVAC system won't interfere while I'm recording. Uh, also making sure that lighting and electrical is set up correctly so that I don't run out of power, especially on the workshop wall that I'm going to build. I want to make sure I have enough power for everything. Oh, another fun thing is I found the hot water heater. It's right up here in this little space. So that was a, a good find. And you might've noticed the new little internet crash cart there. I built it a few days prior to recording the intro and moved all my networking and security gear to it, at least for now. I wanted everything on wheels temporarily so I can quickly move things around during construction if I need to. This cart is actually way overkill for a little network install like this, but A, it takes up a lot less space than that table. The table is a lot nicer for just working on, so I'm gonna use it as a work surface. And B, I'm gonna use this as like a microwave stand at some point over in that corner. So I figured I might as well buy it now and make it useful for this purpose for now. The other thing I want to do today is um, replace the electronic ballast in here and also check some of the other ones to make sure they're all electronic ballasts. These are newer fixtures, so they should be, and they should work with these cool white uh, T8 replacements, the LED tube replacements that I bought that say they work with ballast. So. We'll see. Um, if they don't, then that'll be interesting. I brought my light from home. This is like the most overpowered flashlight in the world. It's fun to hold and carry with you. Uh, but I brought that because I'll have to turn out power to all the lights to work on one light because every single light in this place is on the same circuit, which is highly annoying and one thing that we'll be fixing when we do construction. The second task today was to start replacing some of these fixtures with uh, the old fluorescent tubes with LED tubes. 
I found a cool deal at Lowe's right now. So uh, a lot of electric companies will actually help businesses replace their lighting because it uses so much power for something that we have a good fix for, which is LED bulbs. And so I found these things, they're on clearance, but there's tons of them. There, was, there were like three racks of them available, all these uh, T8 replacement tubes, uh, but it's using half, less than half the power. So whenever I come in here and turn on the lights, it's nice to not have all that power being wasted uh, especially in the front room where I'm not doing any work yet. Uh, so having half the power use is great. It'll save on the electric bill. And um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go get the rest so that I can replace the rest of these fixtures. I don't know if I'll finish that today or not. So all of the light fixtures out here are now changed out, as well as the two up above me. Uh, the one that is not working yet is this one right here. And I have bought these direct wire replacements so we're going to change that a little bit and yeah that's my next task at this point all the lighting is good we're going to reuse most of these lights so that's why i switched them out for leds uh, for this transitionary period between now and when construction is over but for the studio space i'm going to do a little nicer lighting i'm not too worried about those lights right now but uh but i did i did have to switch out this one i was going to put a new electronic ballast in but I decided against that, mostly because Lowe's was out of commercial electronic ballasts. They only had residential ones. So instead, I bought the uh, retrofits where you, you uh, take the ballast out and you tie the two sides into hot and neutral, and then you just pop in a new LED bulb that runs right off the line voltage, and that's it. So um, at this point, I'm mostly finished with the little things I'm going to do here. The next thing I'm going to do is put a uh, new router in over here. So we have lighting, security, and next thing is to tighten up the internet for remote access a little bit better and for security. So yeah, a lot of, uh, a lot of little things to do just to tighten up the security here, and then we'll get on to the next steps. I also started building up a toolkit at the office, just buying a few good tools I needed to have on hand, but since a poor carpenter blames his tools, I won't bore you with that. To close out the first couple weeks, I spent a couple hours knocking down cobwebs, cleaning the windows and glass, and then I vacuumed the entire front space, emptying out about a gallon of dust, cobwebs, and debris. That poor $50 Walmart vacuum didn't realize it'd have to work so hard right out of the gate. So far while popping out ceiling tiles, I've only found some wire nuts and little bits of scrap cable. No dead animals or rodents, thank goodness. The last thing I wanted to address today is why. Why do I need a new space? Why is my basement at home not cutting it? Uh, there's a few main reasons for that. First is I have kids. I have four kids. If you have kids, you understand they're very loud. What I've been doing the past couple years now is I usually record at night after the kids are asleep. As kids get older, they don't go to sleep until later and they also, as you have more kids, they get you more tired at night. So I have two problems. One is I'm usually very tired by the time that I can record, and two is it's usually pretty late. In fact, these little voiceover bits, they were recorded at 1027 on a Monday in late May. And yes, I'm tired. Having a space that allows me to record any time of day is going to be huge. So that's number one. Another big thing is space. So you can see there's there's a good amount of space here. I'll have an office space, I'll have a studio space, I'll have the room in the back with the servers and things. Uh, having the space to be able to set up a project and work on it for weeks at a time without having to tear it down and move it so I can work on another project and set it all back up and then work on it again, that means I can work on a project continuously and I'll have a few workbenches here where I can have something going on and work on it for a long period of time and get more data and do more testing and have more fun with it. So that'll contribute to having a better, more in-depth video than if I have to set up and tear down things all the time, which I have to do right now. It's also gonna be good for workflow. So just with the other two things, I'll have more time to work on actually making the videos better because if I have a setup in the studio space for my talking head stuff, I'll have a set that's permanently set up there so that I can just go up, hit record, and record my script, and then come back out to the office where I do my work and, and have that space. The other big thing is in my workshop, as I've recorded more videos over there, I start hitting my head on the lights and things, because my workshop has a like seven foot nine ceiling, and I hang a light from underneath that, or I put the camera up, and you're tripping over things, you're hitting your head on stuff. Having a studio space with a higher ceiling is huge. In addition to the why, let's get to the how. So how are we gonna turn the space into a studio? Well, there's a few different things we're gonna do. 
the first thing is we're going to build basically a studio inside of here. We're going to build walls inside the walls. We're going to knock out this back wall and put in a new wall back there and then three other walls around it that are going to have a lot of a lot of depth to them. They'll have special sound isolating clips. The wall will be separate so it's like a separate airspace that isolates us from the two tenants on the other sides here. Um, the ceiling will also, there will be a hard ceiling up above with a small drop ceiling underneath it and that'll give two layers of protection against the HVAC. So this space currently has what's called a plenum. A plenum is the space that you can see up here above the ceiling tiles that plenum is where the air comes back into the HVAC system. The problem with that is the HVAC is actually exposed. You can see the inside of the HVAC unit. HVAC units can be pretty loud. These are newer, so they're not as loud, but they can be pretty loud, about 50 to 60 decibels. I did a lot of sound testing in this space before I decided to get the lease, and the sound is not too bad, except when trains roll by outside. Yes, the, there's a train track literally right behind here. But when a train rolls by, we're not going to record. It's going to be impossible. You can't, I mean, there's ways to mitigate that, but it costs a lot of money. So when a train rolls by, we're not recording, but I do want to record when the HVAC goes on. So we're going to do some tricks like running uh, some return air ducts at different angles to get the sound to be reduced back to the HVAC when it's running. The server room will also be a little bit extra isolated with some insulation, sound insulation. So that'll be helpful. And my goal is to have a workshop wall here with an electronics workbench. We'll get to that in a future video. It's going to be fun. Uh, as well as uh, like a camera and gear area for all the camera parts and equipment, tripods, all that stuff. This wall is going to be pegboards, like just tons of pegboard. Uh, over here will be some green screens and drop down stuff. This will be kind of a pass through area. So, you know, there might be a cart here storing some stuff or a project I'm working on. And then over here is going to be the permanent little studio space. So the, the little, uh, like the little talking head area where I'll record a lot of videos. So I got LED lights installed, I cleaned up a bit, I got the security cameras and a little security system running, and I set up a new 2.5 gigabit router with a VPN for remote access. But I'll show you that in my next vlog. Until next time, I'm Jeff Gearling.